Well, if you are experiencing conflict in your family, in your workplace, or even in your church, chances are you're breaking the law. Did you know that? Well, it's called the law of unity, that is. And here's Pat to explain more from the Secret Kingdom. I'm going to tell you now about the guaranteed secret of success. Guaranteed secret of success. When you look back in the Old Testament, you find the people were rebelling against God. All the people, the whole populace of the earth. And they said, let's get together and let's build a tower that will reach up into heaven and basically, we're going to challenge God. We're going to reach up into heaven and challenge God, and we're going to have a unified world. It's the first time that there was a so-called New World Order. The people wanted to have a one-world government in rebellion against God. People have been trying to do that ever since. But in any event, the Bible says God came down, took a look at what they were doing, and here was what he said. This is something you should mark down in your consciousness. This people has one mind, and they speak one language. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. Got that? Nothing they propose to do will be impossible for them. If you have one mind and you speak one language, nothing is impossible. Now, that was God's appraisal at rebellious mankind. And if that was what he said about rebellion, think of what he'd say about those who were united to serve him. They have one mind. Nothing will be impossible. Now, I have found here at CBN... When, and we don't have this too often, but in days gone by, we had groups that thought we were doing things wrong, they ought to do it another way. Whenever we had dissension, money stopped coming in. Money stopped coming in. It, was, it just cut off our flow of fun because we didn't have unity. But I'll tell you a story, and it's a wonderful story. Regent University was birthed by CBN. And when we had gained about 350 students, it was painfully obvious that the quarters we had for the university were too small. We had to have a library and we had to have additional classrooms or we were going to be choked. So I got the architect together, got some people together, and we laid out the plan of a beautiful library classroom building. Now, at that time, CBN was hurting financially. We had bills we hadn't paid. We had the future didn't look too bright. And we had hired a chief financial officer from a bank in New York. Now, that's dangerous in itself. <laughs> And he had grown up in very practical terms with banking mentality that you had to have so much money before you did this, that, and the other. I had come along not having anything and believed God and thought you had to move on faith and the Lord would supply. So in any event, this gentleman went around to the members of our staff, and he basically said, Pat's crazy. He said it in a nice way, I'm sure. <laughs> but he said, if we keep this up, we're going bankrupt. So I knew about this. So I called all the staff together. We had a big meeting. And I said, now, here's the deal. We've got this university. They've got to have this library and classroom building. Or the university is going to die. It can't, it can't grow. And I think it was God's will that we have a university. We built it for his glory. And then I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to refrain 
from going behind my back and bad-mouthing me in the corridors. I said, I don't ask you for any money. I don't ask you for any work. All I ask you to do is to keep your mouth shut. Because if we agree, even though it's not of God, we will succeed. But even if it is of God and we disagree, the venture will fail. I said, that's all I'm asking you to do is just refrain from negativity. So they all looked at each other and they figured that wasn't too hard a, a task. And so they agreed that they would be in unity. Now, the board of trustees of the university had already been in agreement. Uh, we'd joined our hands together and we had prayed and, and, and agreed together. Now, here's what happened. It was a $12 million project. We didn't have the money going in, but we started building. I do not recommend any of you do that. <laughs> like they say, don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. But anyhow, first month, we needed a million dollars. A million dollars extra came in. Second month, we needed a million dollars extra. A million dollars came in. Third month, we needed a million dollars extra. A million dollars extra came in. Fourth month, same thing. Fifth month, sixth month, seventh month, eighth month, ninth month, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Every month, an extra million dollars. Beautiful library. It was finished on schedule and debt free because God looked at the unity. That's the key to success. If you can get together, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Now, nothing will be impossible to them. That's what God Almighty said of unity. And if you have no unity, and that's why the devil is always trying to cause church rifts and church splits. Because when he can take away our unity, he can destroy our effectiveness. Now, this is true whether it is in a big organization or whether it's in a household. Jesus said a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's the flip side of getting it done. A house divided against itself can't stand. Husband and wife are fighting, can't stand. People have a divorce, they get into divorce court, can't stand. They go broke. The largest segment of the poor are single women with children, those who have been the victims of divorce. Instead of coming together in a family where they can combine their skills and resources, they fight, tear each other apart, tear the family apart, and then both of them suffer. There's no question about it. Divorce, that's why God says, I hate divorce. A house divided can't stand, and a country divided can't stand. That's why what's happening in America is tearing this nation apart. This extreme partisanship where the ultra-left and the ultra-right will not talk to each other, they fight each other, and all they try to do is to get advantage over one another. We're not together as a nation. Even now in our wars, it used to be at least we agreed at the, at the water's edge. Now we don't agree about anything. And this constant fighting and, and these so-called bloggers and these people that are throwing bombs around always, always tearing up the fabric of harmony in our land. And unless we have that, this nation will not be able to stand. But God says they have one mind and they speak one voice. Now, nothing will be impossible to them. If you want to have success, real success, get together with people who you agree with and let the Lord show you what to do. Don't try to pull together a disparate group of people who are going to be fighting and think you'll accomplish anything. You won't do it. That's why so much of this so-called diversity that's going on uh, you have to have this group and that group and the other group and everybody, and they're all in there fighting. You need cohesion if you're going to have success. It's just the way it is. And if you have harmony, then all kinds of good things happen. If you have disharmony, you accomplish nothing. That's the law of unity, according to the secret kingdom.
Fantastic. I was sitting here thinking, man, I should be taking notes on that, right? How good was that? Listen, we're teaching and featuring all of the teachings from the Secret Kingdom all throughout this week. So if you've missed any of it, or if you want your family, your friends, or whoever to kind of check it out, all you have to do is just go, go to our uh, website at CBN.com and just click on, I saw it on the 700 Club link, and then you can